Hey everyone, I wanted to quickly go over the new and exciting news we got for Monster Hunter Rise on the Nintendo Switch. Several outlets like 4Gamer, Famitsu, Game & Watch, and in the West, IGN, Game Informer, and even Gamatsu posted a slew of new information with developer interviews regarding the game, so I wanted to quickly give you guys a quick rundown on what was actually covered. After the development of Monster Hunter Generation was complete, the game engine verification process began for Monster Hunter Rise. The concept was developed while supporting the developer Monster Generation's game, and additionally Monster Hunter Rise team exchanged ideas with the team for Monster Hunter World, which was already in development alongside Monster Hunter Rise, to help include elements of World into Monster Hunter Rise. The wirebug idea began as a way to include the element that ties the main part of the action system. It feels good to simply just move around, since you can basically go wherever you can see and exploration and traversal are at its finest. Some of the monster designs give you a wider range of strategy making use of the wirebug, while also some of the monsters are being decided specifically to give you a wider range of strategy while using the wirebug. The reason why Monster Hunter Rise has more of an Asian and Japanese aesthetic is because the director, Jasoni Ishinose, wanted to create something with more of a different taste compared to Monster Hunter Generations and even Monster Hunter World that went in production at the same time. Additionally, so much time had passed since Monster Hunter Portable 3rd that they thought it was a great time to come back to those aesthetics. The four monsters that they've revealed so far, Magnamalo, Aknosam, Grady Suchi, and Tetranodon all seem to have a yokai theme. Several new yokai themes are also going to be spread throughout the entire game, and other new monsters and even returning monsters will have themes alongside it. The Hunter's various voice lines were also taken as a new challenge by the sound team, so if you want to make your character unique, you can set an anime-esque voice and for users who want to play with more traditional shouts, that option can also be adjusted. Like they basically said in the stream, you can turn off voice shouts altogether. Palamutes are set to attack as your character does, and they can also attack on their own, which means that the more your character attacks, the more the Palamute will also attack. While the Palamute does specialize in movement and support, the Palico will specialize in recovery and trap support. In multiplayer, where you can bring only one partner along, this will be a big part of the strategy. There's a big emphasis on communication between the monsters and the hunters, and based on that, fields are designed so that the terrain and the main areas are not too complex, but also not empty enough that you have nothing to do, so they decided to add sub-areas that you can also explore. In previous games, you would simply chase a monster from one area to the other, but now you can take shortcuts through the sub-area. The goal is to make players determine their own strategy if they wish to take a shortcut or follow the monster directly. The gameplay leading up to the hunt is actually different than in previous Monster Hunter games as well. The field is scattered with elements to enhance your stats, so you can challenge the monster after you take some slight detours to make some enhancements, or simply head straight into the hunt. While mounting a monster was not shown in any of the recent gameplay, the developers are confirming that it is making a return. Also making a return out of the 14 typical weapons you've come accustomed to, so that's not changing. Gathering is no longer just for items, because there's various things you can do in the environment and the biology changes throughout that you can gain buffs with different types of organisms, and items are no longer the only thing you will be able to find on the field. The developers have also confirmed that they're not currently thinking about an expanded version, because they're still working on the main story and it's not complete. Event quest and title updates are planned after release, and the idea is to keep players coming back for a long time by adding extra free content. And that's just some of the news I'll be covering today. If you're new to my channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See ya.